Uh, so network data, um, I know in a, a transportation conference, network data isn't going to come up a whole lot, but I would be remiss to call this a basic information presentation workshop if I didn't mention it. Um, so network data starts out well, mapping it. So you have, uh, consider your social network, your friends. You have one-to-one um, -one relationships between people, um, and people have different different properties, um, maybe the people you went to, to college with, the people you went to elementary school with, your, your co-workers, all that. So you can plot each of those as uh, a node um, on the sheet of paper, each, each node representing a person, uh, and you color code them based on, on those, those attributes that they have. And that's nice. Um, you usually tell um, everyone apart there, uh, and then you want to draw your relationships between them. That's what's going to get next. Uh, because things start to overlap very quickly. This is a rather small network. Um, the problem is that the relationships are such, they're so intertwined that uh, the nodes and the links start to overlap and it's difficult to, to follow. Um, so there's um, a couple a couple of rules uh, that go along with creating network data that are kind of set forth by, by some of um, the, the information visualization master, if you will. Um, so what you want to be able to do with a decent network visualization uh, is one, count off that all of the nodes, be able to actually see everything so the nodes aren't overlapped. Uh, you need to be able to count the number of edges coming into the nodes. Um, because if you can't do that, you can't, you can't really know how many relationships that node has. Um, and then the last one is to be able to follow each edge from node to node. So if you have a situation uh, where you have so many edges lining up together that they become so cluttered that you can't follow them, then you've really lost the point of your network visualization because uh, you don't see the relationships that you intended to actually map. Uh, so this is a, a pretty uh, a recent visualization that came out of Facebook that was in the news. Uh, I think this is when they crossed the uh, 600 million user mark. And so what we have here is a network visualization. All the, the friends, uh, friend relationships are, are shown in blue, and as you have them overlap, kind of as we did in heat map, they become more white hot. Um, and the interesting thing here is there's no underlying map. That map that you're perceiving, the, the world map there, that's just drawn based on, on that heat that's given off by the, the tighter connections. So you're seeing you know, this really became apparent down here in you know, Australia, where you've got a lot of people living uh, in the southeast, but no one you know, settled out in the outback there. Um, so you know, for the purposes of you know, calling a decent network visualization, not really, because you can't follow a single relationship point to point here. But I don't really think that was the point that they were going for. They really wanted to show the enormity of their network, and how it is starting to take on the shape of the, the world itself. Um, so there are different types of networks. You have all these relationships. Um, so that's like kind of a web. Um, but you also have uh, more of a tree-like structure where things branch out. Um, and so there's this theory that if you visit any page on Wikipedia and uh, follow the first link in the article and then do the same, uh, you keep doing that until you reach the page philosophy. Um, and so, to test out this theory, um, this guy, and I forget his name, I'm sorry, put together this little application that will let you search for a word, um, and it'll go to the Wikipedia page and start following those links. And sure enough, pretty much everything leads back to philosophy. Is there anything anyone wants to try out? Quality. Quality? So business, pragmatic. Philosophy of science, scientific method, we're getting there. Systematics, life, physical body, physical sciences, right? I've done this a lot. Physics, philosophy, there we go. I mean, it's, it's stuff you wouldn't expect. Lolcat. We'll make it back there. So that's a photograph, which is going to ultimately lead us to uh, sciences. And this is a tree visualization. Everything is, is coming back to this, this root node here. And what, what this uh, designer has done here is 
Um, he's, he's made the wise choice of having that philosophy note at the bottom of the screen because he knows that there's not going to be much that's, that's um, off the side until you start to really clutter this thing up. So he's branched things out, he's spaced these branches, and they follow a certain path, and they're evenly spaced like that. So um, I'm having trouble thinking of words. What, is, what does someone else want to search for? Fish. Fish? <laughs> that's going to probably branch off the same thing as, no, it's not. It might, it might end up hitting that physiology there. Uh, and so you know, now you have physiology as, as a center point, and its um, branches are in a more extreme angle than they were in philosophy because uh, there are potentially more uh, things coming off of it. And that's a, a good lesson you can take when you actually lay out a network visualization. There are a lot of different uh, network visualization algorithms that have been studied to kind of optimize um, the understandability of a network. Um, and, and any quality um, information that you can make in software will I choose from any of uh, So, uh, again, pairing data uh, different types together. Um, this is a visualization that Randall Monroe did. Um, he writes that XPCD webcomic, and a lot of times he's done our comics, um, their data visualizations. So this is the Sword of the Lord of the Rings, and all the relationships of the different characters um, based on the proximity, so which characters are traveling together. So I actually have the, the larger version open up here. Um, so you can see, this is over the entire, the entire trilogy. Um, at the beginning, you have all the hobbits traveling together, and Gandalf comes to visit them, he goes off with Bilbo. Um, you have the elves uh, all traveling, all, all um, up in their uh, Riverdale uh, together, and, and the dwarves, Sauron, and you can see you know, different things happening over time. This is not something that you could do uh, with a computer program, unfortunately. You would not be able to, to lay this out um, in any reasonable way. It's something that really probably took a very long time to do. Uh, but the lesson here uh, is that this is actually a reasonable visualization. You can, you can follow the story um, at any point, pick out the horizontal marker here, and pick out exactly what was going on in the, the movies at that time. Um, so here's um, the Battle of Helm's Deep, um, all of the orcs coming in, converging with the other armies, and who was traveling together. The hobbits were nowhere near there, um, and so on. And he's got other other movies on here. Here's you know, 12 and, and it's Unbroken um, Avengers, they're all the same movie. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of something he created there, um, and it's, it's a situation where you know, not being afraid to do something new really, really paid off there. Because um, there have been a lot of annotations, and this has really been something that's shown to be pretty powerful. Um, oh, uh, sure. Uh, XKCD.com. Um, if you do a Google search for uh, XKCD movies, um, you'll find that. There'll be a lot of annotations of it. Uh, I'm sure the day this came out, um, I had never heard of this movie, Primer. Um, I'm sure a lot of people watch that on Netflix. I know I did. It's a movie about time travel. Um, so you have the characters going forward in time and then kind of stabbing each other in the back and betraying them, going back in time and doing the same thing over again. And that actually might be an accurate representation of the timeline. Um, 